This is Lesson 10.7, Special Segments in a Circle. Your objectives are to find measures of segments that intersect in the interior of a circle and find measures of segments that intersect in the exterior of a circle. When you have two chords that intersect inside the circle, the segment measures can work in a formula like this. Take one of the chords and multiply those pieces together, A times B, and that equals the parts of the other chord, C times D. So take the two parts of each chord, multiply them together, and those are equal to each other. Find X. Assume that segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. For question one, we have two chords that intersect inside the circle. I can take their parts and multiply them, and those equal each other. The vertical chord, the parts are 5 and x. The other chord is broken up into pieces 11 and 11. Multiply those, and they're equal. 5x equals 121. Divide both sides by 5. And x equals 24.2. So when two chords intersect, multiply their parts together, and those equal each other. For question two, the same type of problem. Chord KL is broken into pieces 8 and X. Chord SJ is broken into 4 and 9. So multiply those pieces. 8 times X equals 4 times 9. So 8X is 36. Divide both sides by 8. And X is 4.5. Multiply the parts, and they equal each other. When segments intersect outside of a circle, if you have a secant like the segment on top, you have an outside part and you have the whole thing from one end of the circle to the intersection. The outside of the secant and the whole thing. And then the other type of segment could be a tangent where it intersects the circle once. When you have questions like this, if you have a secant, you will do outside times the whole thing. Notice that's not outside times inside. It's outside times the whole thing. And when you have a tangent, you will square the tangent. You could have two secants two tangents, or one of each, and whatever they are, you will make those equal each other. If, just remember, if it's a secant, it's outside times the whole thing, and if it's a tangent, you will square it. On number four, we have two secants. So I will do outside times the whole thing, equals outside times the whole thing. On the top secant, the outside part is 10. The whole thing is 10 plus 8, or 18. That equals the other secant. The outside part is x. The whole secant you add those pieces together, x plus 3. Notice again, it is outside times the whole thing. And now solve. 10 times 18 is 180. Distribute on the right, x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Since I have x squareds and x's, I'll get everything on one side, so subtract 180 from each side. having a minus 180 over there. 
And now I need numbers that multiply to get negative 180 and add to get negative or get to get positive 3. If they multiply to get a negative, that means I have one positive and one negative. Those numbers will be fifteen and twelve. Since I need a positive three, the fifteen will be the positive, and the twelve will be the negative. Fifteen times negative twelve is negative one eighty. Fifteen plus negative twelve is three. And then remember that when you have two factors that multiply to get zero, each one equals zero. If x plus 15 equals zero, then x is negative 15, which it can't be because a segment can't have a negative length. If x minus 12 equals zero, then x equals 12. That's the only possible answer because 15 won't work, or negative 15 won't work. So just remember, if you end up with x squareds and x's, you'll have to factor, make each factor equal zero, and double check your final answers. Also remember, outside times whole thing equals outside times whole thing. Or if it's a tangent, you will square the tangent. On question five, we have two secants, which means that we'll do outside times the whole thing equals outside times the whole thing. On the top secant, the outside is 15. The whole thing is 15 plus 17, which is 32. On the bottom secant, the outside is x, and the whole thing, when you add them together, is x plus 14. Multiply 15 times 32 is 480. Distribute on the right, and you get x squared plus 14x. Subtract 480 from both sides to get everything on one side x squared plus 14x minus 480. We'll factor this and then solve for x. We need numbers that multiply to get negative 480 and add to get 14. Thirty and 16 will do it. Positive 30 times negative 16 is negative 480, and 30 plus negative 16 is 14. So those are the factors that will work. Make each factor equal 0. If x plus 30 equals 0, then x is negative 30, which won't work. If x minus 16 equals 0, then x is 16. That's the one that will work. Remember to throw out your negative segments. Remember that if you have x squareds and x's that you need to factor. And remember that a secant is outside times the whole thing. Moving down to 8. We have a secant and a tangent. For the secant, it'll be outside times the whole thing. For the tangent, we'll do the tangent squared. On the secant, the outside is 20. The whole thing is 20 plus 25, which is 45. Square the tangent. The tangent's x, so we'll do x squared. 20 times 45 is 900, and that equals x squared. And we'll square root both sides. And x is 30. 
remember that the secant is outside times the whole thing and the tangent gets squared.